Welcome to what's left of the 10-Minute Life Coaching Program. This was a podcast that was a 10-Minute Life lesson that was given right off the bat, and then we gave all the sales stuff right afterwards. It will return to something similar. We'll talk a bit more about the future of this feed in a little bit. But first, let's get a little bit into why the podcast, which was killed officially at episode 150, still exists in this form here, this transitional form. I had planned weeks before to uh, write something, a book or some sort of thing, maybe make a class based on the lessons learned at the Milestone 150. What I was doing before I recorded the 150 episode was I was trying to batch ahead about five episodes past that. I had about a week and a half until we got to the actual 50, 150 episode. And so I was trying to work on an episode, and I don't know if I've even said the, the topic was, there was a... Yes, I have in some some place I have. I know I have. Uh, there was an online health coach doing a Facebook Live talking about drinking water, and I was so frustrated about the fact that she was going back and forth and back and forth and sort of answering all the questions and relieving all the fears of people of how they wanted their water, and they were missing a simple point of just drink the water. <laughs> it was so simple. And I tried to do a 10-minute life coach on that, and it just – wouldn't work out. It turned into a crazy yelling, screaming to the microphone rant. That was going to be episode 151. I figured if I couldn't move past that episode there, stopping at 150 was the right place to do it. So I made a big to do about stopping at 150, hitting the milestone first and then stopping there and rolling on. So what we're going to do in the next or in the upcoming weeks, I've got 11 different titles for chapters or so to have. We may add some more as we go through some things, but this is essentially how things lined out topic-wise, things I learned from 150 episodes. And when I actually turn it into whatever, it may expand a bit more. But I've got 11 different topics, so we have 11 different episodes planned for this continuation of the thing. And last week we gave you number five in order. The first one was It's All About the Learning. Second week was creativity can be overrated. Third week was change is necessary and good for business. Fourth was it's okay to start over and pretend it never ended. And the fifth week, last week, we said thank those who inspired you. There's no particular order how these things popped up. They just turn out as brainstorming ideas for things. And as I put the list together, some things got mashed together. And so now they are officially a list of 11. Not that we're really revealing any secrets, but we're going to go to the uh, sixth one this week. We're, we're going to give it to you right now, and it is entitled Vet Your Sources. This one should turn out to be a fairly quick one, but we'll see. Some of the ones I thought were very quick turned into longer rambles, if you will. But Vet Your Sources, one of the things I learned as I published, writ, produced, recorded, spoke the words for 150 episodes of the 10-Minute Life Coach podcast. Now, I learn from just general work. I work in journalism, work in creating stories and making things out of stuff, that the source is always an important thing to know. And it's critical to know where the source of your content is coming from, where the information is coming from, where your facts are coming from. Because false facts make lies. And bad content sources mean bad content from what you get. A very simple example, if you get an audio source, for example, you do an interview and for some reason you don't do it in optimal conditions, uh, the interview could be corrupted. The file could get corrupted in itself and just the video could be out of sync with the audio. The audio could be bad and your source, what you're supposed to be building your story from, is tainted. You, you can't use it. It's unusable. We have unairable audio sometimes when we try to do a phone interview and sometimes they're on a phone and it's dropping out and it's just the, the sound is just terrible. I'll do that often when I'm hosting, filling in for hosting for talk shows and someone's on a cell phone and their signal is bad. We just tell them we have to hang up and wait till they get the better patches, something, because the source they're call, calling from, their cell signal is illegible. You can't hear it. You can't understand it. So it makes the conversation useless and it makes everyone else just having to deal with the pain of trying to figure out what's going on. So in that sense, it's best to know technically what's wrong, what's going on, and where the source of the file, the audio, the video, whatever is coming from. 
for the information standpoint, it's also important to know where the source of your content is coming from, who is providing it, what they do to get the information initially, what they did to put it into whatever form you were looking at it now, and sometimes the motivation why they are your trusted source. Now, in the world of personal development, a lot of the life coaching and a lot of the podcasting, uh, there's a very overused axiom where if they say, if you know a little bit more than the person that you're telling it to, a little bit more than the person you teach it to, then you are the expert and you have, might as well be a genius. Also said very often is the whole fake it till you make it process where you may not be exactly on high, you may not be the master of something yet, but you know enough to to be in a conversation. And like I said, if you know more than the person that you've got to teach, then you might as well be the expert. You might as well have created the whole system. So there's a lot of people doing this work who aren't quite as up to speed as they need to be. And I, for one, as a person at various points, based on what I was trying to present, fall in that category. Now, granted, many of the masters fall in this category sometimes as well, when some new information pops up or some new technology or especially when podcasting came about and all of a sudden you they couldn't just go to a studio and record some long program. They had to come up with short podcasts. But everybody gets to the point where they're not the expert and they have to pretend like they know a little more than they actually do. So there's a lot of people in this space that are giving coming back with basically recycled content, the same basic stuff over and over again, which should prove that you know what's going on if you cover the basics. But a lot of cases, it's just the basics, and they're just doing a job, a not so much great job, but just a job of rehashing the same pieces over and over again, and it turns into a, just a mishmash of just bad information because what they're rehashing is their slight spin on what's going on and not going back to the source to explain what's going on. I have learned over 150 episodes that it's more important to go back to where the source material is and explain what was in the thought process when it was created as opposed to just come up with some BS idea of my own of why something works. Because I didn't write it. It may make perfect sense the moment I hear it, but I didn't come up with it. The epiphany may be something that is just, you know, all, all of a sudden I understand all the realms of the information and, and the process, but it's probably a process somebody else came up with. I may have rewritten some words and put it in language that I may be able to actually speak and you may be able to understand at this point in time, but it doesn't mean I created it. So, so it's really important to know where things are coming from, who is saying it, why they're saying it, what's the purpose of them saying it, and what do they get out of the process. Having so much regurgitated wisdom is not a good thing for my business, overarching the large business. It should be better for my personal business. Uh, the barriers that have been other things get in the way of me being able to expand and not want to just sit around and just be the you know old man calling out folks because they could and basically making himself look even worse in the process. There's a lot of regurgitated, recycled, and sometimes really bad and old and hurtful information that's going out there being claimed as truth. So while it may have been true at some point in time, or at least may have been believed enough to be true at some point in time, remember, there's a lot of faking it till you make it. So saying things that sound really good sometimes make it make you sound good enough to get that higher, get hired on, and then you can fix it on the back end than trying to be right. So often as I wrote the episodes, wrote the notes for the episodes, I would just take an idea that would pop into my head. Something would trigger something, and I would write that down as the main issue. And then I would decision tree it down, if you will. I, I PowerPoint method. I have a PowerPoint method on how to write speeches where essentially you make a slide, you make your sub-slides, and you just put it all together and write, the, write, write around all that stuff. So... When I came up with an idea, I had to think about where my source came from. Maybe somebody made me frustrated in some situation, maybe at work, maybe out in the store, maybe it's a family thing, and it just ticked me off, and it became an idea to jot down. I would jot down the main idea. I would go back to the situation where it happened. 
I would try to write through it, not as if I were going through the whole thing in real time and be stuck with those emotions in the recording, in my writing. But I go through it as if I was basically disembodied, a third person in watching it, uh, being observant of the action happening in some sense and playing it out. In many cases, I would, you know, make a fake scenario and play it out in my head a few times to see how things should work out and then write around that. Because often if the source is me and my feelings and my emotions, my feelings and my emotions can lie to me as I put things down. So remember that specifically. Sometimes if the source is literally something that came from inside of you, it is fresh and brand new from you. You've got to think about your motivations and your feelings at the time. Also, it's very important to just to know where the magic stories come from. A lot of things that we do in life in general are cliches that are repeated over and over again. And because they're cliches, they work because people instantly understand them. So if you instantly just roll off some sort of old wives tale type wisdom that people just tend to listen to and believe, you'll probably gather a, a great response from that. That'd probably be a great way to do the quick authenticity thing, you know, the no like and trust thing that we talk about a lot. There's another one right there. But what it doesn't do is provide the people you are serving or provide anyone in that manner uh, any real context of what is going on or where it comes from. If you're going to lay down some wisdom, you got to be able to explain the wisdom in the first place. There are times when you say something that just comes off the cuff that's just so amazing. And there are times where I do something, all of a sudden a snap, something comes up and I can explain something. People go, wow. But that's not a 90% issue. That's more like a 15 to 20% issue, if that high. Most of the times, I'm just rattling off things from knowledge that I've known from before from having enough experience doing something to see something similar and placing it back into a similar situation and seeing how it plays out. In fact, most cases, my coaching is just telling people about similar situations and how they may have played out or may have play, may play out if they put themselves in that situation. Rocket science is really not what we do in life coaching. It's really just listening listening for cues and stories to go through, putting that person in a realm, a mental realm, where they can see where they are actually going, where they came from, and what they can do about the two. Maybe they need to start coming from someplace else. Maybe they need to start working towards going somewhere else. But it, you can't get to that point unless you understand the story they're telling. You can't give them good reference points unless you understand the sources from those ideas. So one thing, a very big thing learning from doing all those podcasts, all 150 episodes of it, is that you have to vet your sources. Sometimes you've got to go back and do the research. Just because you heard it from four different people doesn't mean that it's actually true. When I'm doing my reporting work and we get some sort of information, some sort of tip, if you will, from anyone, even if it's from like a police officer, we go back and try to find someone else to corroborate, somebody else who can say something similar or at least tell us that what they're saying sort of makes sense. If we have an issue with a police department, if you will, on some issue that they're having, we will ask other police agencies or other police officers sort of in confidence. When this type of situation comes around, can this really happen? If some PR person gives us some line about something being the greatest thing ever, uh, we go to some other sources who use that thing and see if they think it's just as great or not quite as great. People who have nothing to hide usually will allow you to check things out to see that they have nothing to hide. Now, that's not always the case. Some people with nothing to hide don't understand why you don't trust them. If you should have earned your trust, that's one of the issue on its own. And people with something to hide don't want you to find out what they have to hide. That's another issue in its own. But most people who are trusted sources, trusted stalwarts of information, people that know what to expect are going to come in with some facts to back up what they're saying. And most theories out there are only theories until there's enough published evidence of repeatable evidence to back up what it is they're saying. So it's okay to be a bit skeptical 
when you hear something from someone, even if it sounds great, it's okay to think, well, is that really the truth? And then go back, do some research, ask them, confront them, if you will. Don't just be mean about it, though, but confront them and where they got it from and how they got it. And they may tell you it's it's something that was just basic wisdom that they that was just tossed down from person to person to person. And they saw it worked out well in this situation, and that's where they got their use of it. And that's fine. You can take basic knowledge that you know is good, and if you've tried it before and you know that it's good, it's great. But if you're just regurgitating words that are heard over and over again because you keep hearing them on random podcasts, that's not really spreading real knowledge. That's just regurgitating just general rabbit crazy stuff. So... The number six item in what I've learned from 150 episodes of the 10-Minute Life Coach podcast is to vet your sources. It's important. The people who are being vetted shouldn't mind too much. If they mind a lot, that may tell you a bit about the material they're handing you on on that end right there. Think about that. And think about that when you yourself are dispensing information and knowledge. Where exactly did you get it? Is it tainted from the source? Is it tainted from the delivery from you? Is it really pure good information? So always think about that. And that's it for this sixth item on the list. Like I said, there's 11 current items at the moment, and we'll probably stay at 11. Past 11, we do have a plan. Not so much a master plan or maybe a great plan, but a plan for this feed and for this podcast. And a lot of it came from some reviews of the other podcasts I've been trying to send you to for quite some time, especially since this one's gone to send things over to another brand, the Your Better You brand at yourbetteryou.info. I've listened to a couple people talk about the comparisons, and no, the podcasts are not the same. The 10 Minute Life Coach was 10 minutes of information. The Steps Your Better You, which comes with yourbetteryou.info information, is 90 seconds. That one's quick. That one blows through. That one just kind of hits you and you go. The 10 Minute Life Coach dig deeper and gave sometimes pretty detailed stories on people with background, what's going on. So coming soon, I guess coming, you know, five episodes from now or so, we're going to keep this feed alive. We're going to keep things going. We will not continue with the 10 Minute Life Coach because that came with a whole bunch of other baggage that just wasn't working. But we're going to turn this into a different feel of a podcast with a very similar mission. There will be a 10-minute life lesson, and we probably will call it 10-minute life lessons or something very similar like that. So we'll change a couple names, change some logos, change some things like that. But the show will soldier on, although we will start back at 1 or maybe even a 0 to explain the change. That's probably what will happen to get the change explained to you guys. So coming soon... About five weeks or so, we will redo the whole redo again and go back to give you 10-minute life lessons. And the format will probably be fairly simple. I'll figure out 60 seconds or less for the open. I'll give you nine minutes of actual content at the 10-minute mark, and then I'll say my thank yous and do my housekeeping and the sales pitch at the end. So hopefully you will appreciate this. I'm sure you will. Hopefully you will find ways to support this. I'm sure you will. And hope you'll find ways to support everything else we have going on, which I'm sure you'll do as well. The biggest way you can help me out right now is literally financially. Things are summertime is here. Things get slower in the summer in some cases and a lot more busier in other cases. So the business doesn't side business does not pick up. It gets slower because people are on vacation and they're not doing as much business business. But some other activities take up a lot of time, which means I can't do other side gig things. So I'm looking for some help directly, if you have it, via Patreon. If you go to Patreon, which is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N, so patreon.com slash J Cleveland Payne, you know how that's spelled, the letter J, Cleveland like the city, P-A-Y-N-E, you can see my patron page and for things you can get for supporting me. Now, we'll be working on tidying that up a bit in the next, in, well, as of getting off this recording, number one, and in the upcoming weeks we'll have it, so it's a bit more stable to what we're doing right now. But anything as small as the $1 contribution, the $1 patron is an awesome stake. It shows that you love me, uh, you want me to keep this thing going on, 
and it can keep me in coffee and snacks and goes on from there. So that's the main direct way that you can join in and help this thing go on. That's via Patreon. That's literally becoming one of my patrons at patreon.com slash J. Cleveland Payne. Patreon spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. My secondary ask for this week is the newsletter. I have an email newsletter that's I'm a bit derelict in getting out. It was once a weekly update, or at times it's been a weekly update. Uh, for many reasons, it has not been consistent. It will start getting consistent, and we're changing in the focus of that as well. So we want you to get in on all information that's coming to you from me, and it's very simple. Go to jclevenpain.net slash newsletter, jclevenpain.net slash newsletter, and sign up today for the email newsletter. Email is not dead. We know that. And so that's one great way to get the big bulk of information on what I have going on all the time. You can stop by the website, jclevenpain.net anyway, working to freshen that up a little bit. We got the new um, theme in place, and so we're just trying to figure out how to get some of the other the, the fancy pages up there so it looks like all those other websites out there. Because one thing I've also learned which isn't a bullet point but may turn into a bullet point, is that copying what other people are doing is not such a bad thing because it's social proof. People see something that works, it gets followed by, as you know, to a T by other people hoping they get a similar response. That may turn into a bullet point. I'm not quite sure yet. We'll figure that out down the line. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up for today. I'm going to thank you for being a part of this journey for the 10-Minute Life Coach, either in the 150 episodes of official podcast or right now the six episodes of the after podcast and the podcast that's to come in the future. So I'm going to thank you in advance for that. You can visit me at jclevenpain.net, of course, and email me at jclevenpain at gmail.com for any other questions. I'd still love you to go to yourbetteryou.info and check out the, the podcast, Steps to Your Better You, and the information coming there. Uh, still, I still have a brand for life coaching, if you will, and we're going to do some branding stuff under that name with a lot of the materials we have there. But I have heard your concerns about the differences in the material and the podcast itself. And along with consolidating a lot of my efforts into one place, which is probably where your better you will live, or your better you will basically be all of it. Uh, we're going to try to make that a little better. I uh, see. Here I am telling you about fixing the source. I have issues with the source of my information going to you, so I'm fixing that. I am eating my own dog food in this one. At this point, I am bailing out and not eating dog food. Going back to um, getting a snack and working on some more great things for you towards the future. Thank you for just being here. It's so amazing that you guys are taking the time to click a button, download me talking, listen to me for a few minutes, and hopefully use that to your advantage. So I'm going to do my best to make sure you're getting much, much better because every time I do this, I get much, much better. Thank you, guys, and we'll talk to you next week for more Aftermath, After Show, After Action things I learned from publishing 150 episodes of the 10-Minute Life Coach Podcast.